Welcome to this week's prescribed dose of laugh support. The only lifestyle program that lets you in on all the stuff you never thought you could do. That's right. It's wonderful to be in your homes tonight. Yes, it is. I'm Todd, life support's handiest man. And tonight, I'll be heading out to the backyard and giving you some top tips on eating fresh and fast from your very own veggie patch. I'm Penny. You know the rest. A little later, I'll be showing you how to keep those points on your driver's license. And I'll be topping up your knife knowledge with a frisk-free way to carry an awesome blade in today's uptight uptown. Knowing I need no introduction, I'll simply say, I'll sit and tell you that tonight I'll be teaching you a memory trick that will make you the envy of an elephant. I'm Life Support's modern woman Sigourney, and tonight in a special segment, I'll be showing you ladies the perfect place to hide your solo pleasure pal. Oh, well, haven't we got an exciting show for you tonight? Yeah, it sounds all right. It certainly does. So let's get started. You know, there's nothing more satisfying than eating your own food from your own garden. But unfortunately, too many people think they don't have the time to tend to a veggie patch or even the time to wait for nature to deliver the goods. But if you take a tip from Todd, you can maintain that gratifying feeling of self-sufficiency without the hassle. Instead of planting seeds, just bury canned veggies in your garden. You still feel in touch with the land, but you guarantee a meal from your garden instantly. Now, there are a couple of things you should know if you're keen to try this at home. Firstly, make sure your soil has good drainage. If it retains too much moisture, that could spell a spot or two of rust, not to mention rotting away labels. And you don't want potluck for dinner every night. Secondly, this type of gardening is ideal for what we call companion planting. This is when you group together all the vegetables and herbs that complement each other. Like sliced beetroot and 3B mix should always be planted together because they partner up so well in a buffet lunch spread. Try to avoid putting carrots and asparagus together as they are seasonal vegetables and don't really mix well. And if you're living in an apartment or you don't have a garden, you can still be satisfyingly self-sufficient with a simple window box herb garden. Basil. Oh, it always smells sweeter when it's straight from the garden. Did you know that the cops now have the power to randomly stop and search anyone they think might be carrying a knife? They're victimising people just because of the way they look. And apparently we look like the kind of people that'd carry a blade. But don't worry, because there is a way for you to carry a knife without the cops giving you a second look. Simply dress in chef's whites. It's customary to carry the tools of your trade to work with you and you don't even have to conceal them. And let's face it, this is gonna do a lot more damage than some pussy butterfly knife. So there you go, kids. If you're in a knife carrying gang, don't wear colors, wear whites. Because the cops will always leave whites alone. See ya. Every modern woman, married or single, no matter how socially adept, will eventually find herself home alone with an itch to scratch that just won't go away. So, every girl needs a little helper like this. It doesn't always take two to tango. And let me tell you, there's no shame in a little solo dirty dancing. 
The trouble is, no matter where you hide it, there's still a chance that your lover, boyfriend or husband is going to find it. And men hate the idea that you might actually get sexual pleasure from something that isn't them, especially something that stays hard for over four minutes. So, the eternal question remains, how do you have your little helper and hide it too? Well, as Edgar Allan Poe taught us in the purloined letter, the best place to hide something is out in the open. People never look for something that's right in their face every day. So, here's the way to make sure that your not so little secret is safe. Disguise it as a toilet roll holder. Simply remove the roll from the bracket and then insert your pleasure machine as the spindle of the toilet roll holder. And there you go. Men are so used to having these kinds of phallic objects in the loo, they'll never give it a second thought. Oh, and if he does call you on the phallic shape of the holder, accuse him of having a filthy mind and ask him if he often has homoerotic thoughts like that. He'll back off quick smart, so he'll never discover that the loo roll holder is battery operated. It's quite embarrassing. They should hide it, they should keep it in a private place. I'm not saying I have one, <laughs> but in the clothes, you know, you put them all at the back there and just make sure it's your private drawer. But then again, don't call it a private drawer because they're bound to go for it. One chick I know that does have a dildo, doesn't hide it. And her boyfriend doesn't hide it either. <laughs> they just leave it lying around. <clears throat> yeah. Which gets me a bit horny. Jeez, Dr Rudy, what do you reckon about that? Well, I think it's totally unnecessary for young women to use things like that. Not everything has to be a DIY project. Get a man for God's sake. I know, and batteries are so expensive these days, but a bloke, I mean, all you've got to put in a man is a meal, and he's ready to go. That's right. And next time she declines your advances by saying she has a headache, remember it's probably from the buzzing sound she's been listening to all day. Jeez, Dr Rudy, you might be on to something there. Well, let's move on now, shall we, Dodd? Yeah, right. And let's do that by taking a look at this. In this day and age, we're more and more conscious of what we're putting into our bodies and what we're putting on our bodies. So, when you're next buying makeup, here's a label all modern women should look for not tested on animals. It's important because it means the manufacturers haven't really found out for sure whether or not your makeup will react with your skin. Now, I'm all for animal liberation, but if it's the choice between a bunny suffering hours of excruciating pain before a tortured death, or me getting a nasty rash on my cheek just before a big night out, well, it's no contest. And because this sort of thing now dominates the cosmetics industry, almost nothing has had a proper test on flesh. So, here's a solution. Simply offer to look after your friend's children. Then, have a fun makeup session where the kids can try on all the newly released makeup lines. Children are best for makeup trials for two reasons. Firstly, they love to wear lots of makeup. Little girls will want to apply more than a prostitute, and little boys will always want to paint their face like a clown, so they're guaranteed to get maximum exposure to any nasties. And secondly, their young skin is much, much more sensitive than yours. So if they come away unscathed, then you know that your cosmetics are completely safe. And if they discover a product that's probably best avoided, those tears will be washed away with a piece of chocolate long before mummy and daddy come home. Make sure you carefully note the product so that you never use it and so you can recommend it to girlfriends who've done you wrong. Or better? So remember, it's still possible to have a clear conscience and a clear complexion. Not tested on animals? No need when they've been tested on little angels. The problem Australia is facing at the moment is that a lot of our international brothers and sisters are taking a leaky cruise ship to rock up on our lucky doorstep. So since a lot of these boat folk are from Afghanistan and all they want to do is settle down and lead a peaceful life, how about some of you lucky Aussie farmers show a bit of heart and arrange for an Afghani family to leave their own bombed out backyard and settle into yours? It'll be well worth it because while you help your new Afghani brothers and sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins and grandparents find a new home, you'll be able to use their expertise in semi-arid farming to your advantage. Before America and their mates moved in, 
Afghanistan's major export crop was poppies, which when refined supply 70% of the world's heroin. So remember, think globally, act locally. The next time your field is fallow, don't follow the crowd. Diversify your crops by planting poppies. Then simply encourage your new neighbours to do what they do best. It all balances out pretty well. The Afghanis are experts in cultivating semi-arid soil and they want to live here. And because European farming methods have stuffed the land, most Australians want to live in the cities. So, here's an opportunity to get off the sheep's back by boosting your economy with cheap smack. See ya. How's it? Dr. Rudy here. In this age of networking, when remembering someone's name is more important than talent or work ethic, the one thing that you don't want to have is a poor memory. Unfortunately, as people grow ever more boring and pedestrian, it's becoming increasingly difficult to remember their names. That's why I like to employ a little technique called mnemonics. Mnemonics is just a term we professionals use for a short rhyme or phrase you use as a memory aid. So when you meet a new person, just think of a phrase that rhymes with their name and you're much more likely to remember their name the next time you meet. Slept with his wife, Jonathan Fife. Hello again. How is your wife? Ah, oh, big, dull and fat, Angela Pratt. Good to see you. Nine months to live. How's it, Viv? You're looking great. It's easy as that. So wave goodbye to the social blues today with the aid of our memory friend, Mnemonics. Hello there. Ah, locks the back door. Fiona Moore. Fana. Oh, Penny, that was an informative segment, don't you think? I mean, I really believe... Oh, my God! What? Your arms under your arms. There's something there. There's nothing there. What do you call that? Um, hair? I can't believe it. I mean, on national television. I mean, you don't have to respect yourself, but at least you can respect the people at home. They don't need to see that. I don't think they care. Well, I just hope there's a good reason for it, like severe sensitivity or extreme allergy. No, nah, just don't shave my pits. I'm not making the man rich by buying his blades. Especially not when he's the one telling me I need to be smooth to be feminine. But you do. I mean, how on earth are you going to get a man if you're trying to compete to look like one? Oh, don't worry, I do all right. In fact, some blokes think it's a bit of a turn-on. Really? <laughs> no, I think it says more about your boys rather than my men. <laughs> anyway, I think you should put them away now. I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. So right now, let's take a look at this. There's nothing wrong with living in a small apartment. What with housing prices these days, most of us can't afford to live in the salubrious digs that we'd like. What's more, if you're trying to make a good impression with that special lady, sometimes you want to make things appear bigger than they really are. Ten years ago, a home decorator would have told you to install mirrors all down one wall, but no one's fallen for that trick since 1987. The answer is to create the illusion that there's more to your pad than meets the eye. Simply install some fake doors and your bachelor pad will become a multi-room palace. And if anyone asks you what's in the other rooms, just act all mysterious and elusive. Girls love a man of mystery. The real estate market is by definition competitive, but with so many houses up for auction every week, how do you differentiate your investment property from the others in the street? The answer is simple. No matter how far we think we've crawled out of the primeval ooze, we are still motivated by primitive urges. So, on the day of your auction, just borrow your next door neighbour's house and then phone your favourite madam and engage the services of two trustworthy professionals, giving them explicit instructions. At 600, take your 25, 625 for bid now. Would you like to meet them? 700. At 700,000, bid 50 bid now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Remember, when it comes to real estate, it's all about position, position, position. So take my advice and you'll double the return on your extremely hot property. Sold to you, sir. Congratulations. Bye now. These days, speak 
cameras are everywhere. And if you get pinged by one, you not only cop a fine, but you also lose points off your licence. So if you like to lead foot it, don't worry, because there is a way for you to get where you're going faster without losing a point. Here's what you do. When a fine arrives, pay it. But here's the tip. Give them a tip. If you're supposed to pay a fine for $118, send them $120. Then the Infringement Processing Bureau will send you a check for the excess two bucks. Now, here's the important part. Don't cash that check. Because, thanks to the beauty of bureaucracy, the Infringement Processing Bureau can't deduct points from your licence unless the cheque's been presented. And that's all there is to it. I'm sure you still have to pay the fine, but the point is, your points are more valuable, especially on a double demerit weekend. See ya. Gee, Sigourney, seeing as that's the mailbag, why don't we take a look at this week's viewers' letters? And this week, we've got a very special letter from a very special young lady. OK. She writes, My name is Daisy, and I'm an Aboriginal woman who is part of the Stolen Generation. I'd been living happily with my foster parents, Doug and Beverly, for five years. I had a television in my room, made decent pocket money, and was on the hockey team. Then one day, someone decided this was wrong and callously took me away from them. I didn't even get a chance to say goodbye. Gee, this nation of ours has a lot to answer for. I followed the white picket fence back to our home in St Ives, but they'd already moved on. It's been 20 years since I've seen them, but I was wondering if there was any way you could reunite me with the two people I still think of as my parents. Yours sincerely, Daisy, formerly of St Ives. Daisy? If I said I knew pain like yours, I'd be lying. And Daisy, I just want to say to you and your foster parents and all the foster parents who have had their children shamelessly taken from them, we at Life Support are deeply sorry. And Doug and Bev, if you'd like to be reunited with your temporary daughter Daisy, why not write in to us and we'll try and get you back together. Oh yes, we'd love to reunite your family. Just contact us at Life Support, locked bag 028. Crow's Nest, 1585. I just hope it works out for the best. But right now, why don't we lighten the mood and take a look at the next segment? Had a filth party last night. The only problem is, my next door neighbour Jerry keeps giving me grief. But I like to party, and I'm sick of the man's minions coming round and shutting things down. So, today I'm going to show you how to make sure your next door neighbour never calls the cops again. All you have to do is grab yourself half a dummy and screw it onto a skateboard, put a t-shirt on it and whack on a cap. Now you have yourself an innocent kitty just playing on his skateboard. The next time your neighbour goes to work, just roll the dummy out in front of the car. When the dummy's hit, intercept your neighbour before he gets out of the car. Don't worry, mate. I'm the only one who saw. Just drive. I'll take care of it. For God's sake, just drive. Now, your neighbour will probably contact you within a couple of hours. Just tell him the child is dead and you've buried the body. No one will ever know. It's just our little secret. He shouldn't complain about the noise anymore and there's no way he'll call the cops. And you can count on him to help you out with anything you need in the future. Right neighbourly of him. See ya. Uncomfortable shoes can take the fun out of even the nicest evening. Your mind should be focused on him. But instead, it's focused on the pain from the blood blister that's swelling up in your stiletto. But of course you can't wear comfortable shoes. We all know what they say about women who wear comfortable shoes. Fortunately, I have a solution. Next time you have a big night out wearing sadomasochistic shoes, get a doctor to give you an epidural. That's right. Once I inject this anaesthetic into Sigourney's spine, she won't be able to feel anything from the waist down. Thanks, Dr. Rudy. Do you like my new shoes? They could be lined with razor blades. I don't feel a thing. Now I can hang on his every word without selfishly thinking about my own pain. True, you do need to take sex into consideration. But I find that in certain cases, not being able to feel anything can sometimes be an advantage. 
Okay, I've picked up heaps of chicks in the clubs. They got high heels on. I mean, they come home. Sometimes I go home, a couple of them, if I'm lucky. And they go all blisters and that. And I go, what are you wearing? They go, I don't care. Just to look good. They go, to pick up me, mate. That's right. So it's all right. I don't care. It's their pain. Not my loss. Oh, g'day. You may have noticed that reality TV has captured the imaginations of not only our nation, but the entire world. Seems we love to turn on the telly and watch a bunch of strangers taking their clothes off, then voting each other off islands or out of houses. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'd love to be involved in a game like this, but the reality is, only one person walks away with that prize. But there is a way for you at home to enjoy the thrills and excitements of the reality TV experience, making sure you walk away with it all. All you need to do is make a list of some of the people in your life. Like here, I've listed down my mum, my dad, my lady friend Lynette, my fellow co-hosts, my mate Kev from footy, and my stylist Tyrone. Now, at the start of every week, I'm gonna call up two of these people, the two that have been annoying me the most, and let them know they've been nominated to be voted out of my life. Hello, Kev? Yeah, it's Todd here, mate. Hey, Kev, you know how on Monday night after footy training, you dacked me in front of that ladies' netball team? Well, yeah. I've nominated you for eviction out of my immediate circle. So unless you clean up your act, I'm voting you out. Bye. Exciting, isn't it? And it's a great way to keep your family, friends and lovers on their best behaviour. Now, at the end of every week, when you've really had a good think about it, just call up your chosen evictee and let them know that Todd has spoken. Then, cross them off your list. Now, after a month or so, you may begin to feel a little lonely, but don't panic. That's just part of the experience. And as the ancient Chinese proverb goes, if you love something, set it free. If it comes back to you, it's yours forever. And if it doesn't, it was never yours to begin with. But when they do come back, you'll hit the prize pool. Hello? Oh, g'day, Mum. Yeah, of course I'd like you to take me out to lunch. That'd be lovely. Well, there's a chance you aren't going to believe this. But here we are, which means it's the end of another show. That's right, and I hope we brought some relief to your lives. Oh, Dr Rudy, I just know that we've made a difference. Totally. But for those of you whose lives are more complicated and you're still searching for succor, don't worry, because we'll be back again next week. With more advice you'll only find on life support. In the meantime, why not rejuvenate yourself at a health spa? And don't forget, the only reason we're in here is because you're out there. Until then, be good to one another. And remember, we're here for you. Good night, Australia.